Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Going to do a quick video today on is it a good idea using gravel or stones, large rocks in a pond? Stay tuned. Okay, so the channel is all about helping people. Uh, we want to share some of the problems we've come across um, in day-to-day -day work that we have. And uh, we want to sort of maybe show you ways you can avoid it or maybe just do it a little bit better moving forward. So if you like the channel, click the like button. If you want to see some more videos like this, also you can click subscribe and turn on notifications for more. Is using stones or gravel, large rocks in a pond a good idea? Sounds silly and sounds like quite a small thing, but this can actually make or break a pond. It doesn't happen straight away, it takes a few years, but we'll get into it and I'll tell you why. There are a few reasons why I think people like to use stones, gravel, uh, rocks, etc. in a pond. I think the main one is they might, may not like this, this, you know, the site of pond liner and they use it to cover the base, maybe build up the rocks on the sides just to sort of try and hide it. Um, and also maybe give, you know, plants an area to grow in uh, and also maybe an area for animals, you know, frogs and things to live in. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. So obviously we do it for a living. So we go around people's ponds and help people, you know, get them back to uh, their former glories. And some of the worst ones we've come across and some of the hardest jobs we've had to tackle are ponds that have been built completely full of rocks or um, there's just loads of gravel and stones on the bottom. So using gravel to start off with, as an example, so it goes in, it covers the bottom, um, people use it because it looks more natural perhaps and covers the liner. So let's talk about some of those problems using gravel. First of all, it looks, you know, it looks pretty, um, looks fairly natural, but it doesn't take long for it to start changing color. It darkens up quite quickly. Um, lots of algae can grow on it, uh, blanket weed and so forth. But one of the main problems is, so ideally you've got your pond, you spend lots of money on a pump and filter, uh, you put some gravel in the bottom, you want all the dirt obviously to go into the filter, but the problem is as the dirt comes out of the fish or falls into the pond, it sinks to the bottom and instead of making it to the pump, it gets trapped in the gravel. So effectively, you think about gravel as being like one massive sponge. All the dirt lands in the gravel, gets stuck in between the little bits, and generally speaking, the smaller bits will fall through the gravel down to the bottom and gradually fill it up. So where the dirt should make it to the filter, it's in the gravel. So you may think, oh, the filter's doing quite well, but actually most of the gravel is catching. So as you can imagine, the main problem with that is over time, it, it builds up and it builds up and it builds up. Eventually it makes it to the top and then from there on, obviously it can't go in the gravel anymore um, and it most, more than likely will just silt up the bottom and that will grow and grow and grow. Every time the fish go in to find some food, you know, carp, goldfish, they're bottom feeders so they pick up a, a mouthful of gravel or stones and they spit all the silt out. Um, so you might find your, your pond's constantly cloudy. Also over time, all the smaller particles at the bottom um, it actually solidifies. It can be one large piece of solid ground basic on the bottom of the pond. It just makes everything more, dif more difficult when it comes to maintaining and cleaning. So cleaning gravel, like, oh my god, it's, it's such a job. If you have a large bed of gravel in a pond, um, let's just say it's a fairly large pond, you're probably putting a couple of tons of gravel. So just think about logistically how how are you going to clean out two tons of gravel? First of all, you're probably going to have to take out the pond, wash it in pond water separately, and then put it back in. Now, that is a job, Tom, we've done it quite a few times, um, and it's, it's one of those jobs, to be fair, we'd rather not do. It's that bad, it's such a job. And also the problem is when it solidifies, human nature, you want it to get out as easy as possible. So it's, you need to really use a spade or something, but most people have a pond liner, so you can't use a spade, so how, logistically can you get it out without damaging the liner as well so big no-no when it comes to cleaning absolute nightmare so imagine this now so you've got your, your gravel in the pond it's got loads of rubbish in there and from the start you maybe planted a water lily or some other plants now water lilies in particular are um, well they, they spread very very quickly so obviously the roots can't go through the liner so they mat along the bottom and eventually they take over the whole bottom and you may lose about a foot or so of water space. So it's just pure lily roots. It's difficult enough to take them out of the pond when there's no gravel, but imagine now that's solidified in 
and it's one solid bed of roots and gravel it is impossible to take out it is not a good idea to have gravel in a pond so then you might be wondering if you can't have plants in gravel how can you have your plants well lots of people just have plants in baskets so as long as you have the right size basket your pond plants can grow into the basket every year you just take them out you chop them back trim off all the excess roots and you just keep on top of the maintenance moving forward and it keeps the base nice and clear so ideally as the dirt is produced it makes its way into your pump or bottom drain or whatever the case may be and then it goes into the filter and you clean out the filter job done you might be thinking well I've just put a new pond in and it looks really bare I want to put some gravel in to make it natural or whatever the case may be so just get some plants get some nice plants uh, water lilies or whatever in pots like I just said before and then just give it a few months and they'll grow really really quick and they'll all naturalize the pond and then trust me they'll do a much better job than gravel on the bottom will do so it will be better to start off with but just work with it take your time if you're going to use gravel around the edge of the pond we come across this one quite a lot um, which is it's, it's okay as long as you've got like I don't know a, a bit of stonework holding the gravel up and then the water on the other side but if you're just having gravel on the edge to sort of hide the liner it's not going to work You've, all of that will eventually fall into the pond it only takes a few animals to walk around you know kids to knock it in it eventually will fall in so if you if you have that idea in your head I probably wouldn't do it unless you've got something to hold or stop the gravel physically going in so what about using larger stones or even big rocks in a pond okay so one thing to think of when you when it comes to building a pond so a lot of people we get questions like this all the time where we get some pictures of ponds people have seen on the internet or they've had a, their friends have had a pond built and they've got loads of stones in there and rocks and all the rest of it and it looks really pretty um, we like to look at it from a um, down the line point of view or how to sort of future proof your pond okay so one thing we'd recommend to do uh, when it comes to building or planning a pond to start off with uh, I know it's not ideal and you don't want to have one of these but should you ever spring a leak or the liner has a split somewhere um, or even the liner needs replacing you need to try and build it in a way where it's not going to cost you um, more than double it was to put the pond in okay so there's quite a few other companies out there that really um, try and push ponds which are completely full of rocks and stones now <laughs> I don't know why they do this maybe they they can't build stonework properly and it's just easier to chuck in a whole load of stones to hide all the liner uh, and I you know I don't care how many layers of underlay you put down or how, how much cushioning you put down all it takes is a a small leak or split somewhere after time and water will find its way out and that pond will go down now I can almost guarantee you, if you paid a company to put in these massive stones, lots of rocks all in the in, in your pond and it looks all pretty and you spring a leak, I'll be very, very surprised if they actually picked up the phone call from you to go back and fix it because it's absolutely impossible. You would never be able to find the leak because you can't see the liner. You won't be able to get the stones out because chances are the bigger stones you would have had to have used a digger to drop them in. But just by trying to take out the large stones on their own, just imagine you're probably going to end up damaging the liner even more already so big stones in a pond just think about should you ever come across a leak how are you going to get that fixed also stones and large rocks in the pond will act pretty much exactly the same as the gravel base does so all the dirt will just go in all the little nooks and crannies and eventually build up and it won't go into your filter so again it looks pretty to start off with but it doesn't take long for everything to block up and then when it comes to cleaning it you can't clean it because everything's in between all the stones so without taking all the stones out you're not going to be able to get up all the rubbish as well it's just another thing to take into consideration if you were to try and clean it out you'll get someone in there they'll drain it drain it down as much as they can they'll blast out the stones a little bit but most of the dirt will still be in there so it's it's not effective to clean also like the gravel so think about you this big big nice pond full of stones and rocks and things you put a few plants in one year and then um, three or four years later all your plants have grown together and you just it's impossible to maintain so yes you might be able to chop some of the plants back but it's the root system that's the problem the roots are so invasive and like I said they can't go through the liner so they'll grow into everything and eventually you will just lose water space and after years down the line this pretty amazing pond that you had is just now a puddle 
full of plants it looks an absolute mess when it comes to trying to you know if you did want to try to take some of the plants out and reduce them down it's impossible once they root into all the little nooks and crannies within the rocks it becomes one solid state water lily roots on their own are quite soft to chop out um, put them into rocks you cannot get them out only way you'll be able to get those stones out once those plants have rooted in is by using a digger using a digger in the pond basically means you have to start again you have to rip it all up new lining you know it costs you so much more doing it that way than it would by just doing it properly from the start okay so you might be wondering well if i can't use gravel and i can't use stones how how can i make my pond look nice and natural so if that was the type of pond you want to have a nice sort of wildlife natural looking pond you can still incorporate we would recommend maybe just say one row of nice rocks around the edge even if you partly sunk them um, a cement base down first to cushion the stones you can let that go off or depends how big they are you can put them directly onto it to so spread weight on the liner there's no pressure points forcing anything through the liner and also once everything's in place and gone off um, they actually help to protect the liner from the bottom and from the back so when all the rocks are in place the joints of the rocks you can cement so that will help to stop any of the dirt you know settling in between those bits as well and then it will give you a really nice strong edge that will last many many years so just to recap keep your plants in pots try and keep the base and sides free of you know large stones gravel that sort of thing you want it, the dirt to get into the filter so you can maintain the filter and keep on top of that I assure you you will enjoy it a lot more than rather a pond that looks pretty to start off with but in five years ten years down the line it's an absolute mess and you're looking to either fill it in or start over again and it's going to cost you a lot of money so i hope this helps um, if you like the video hit the like button and subscribe for more hit the notifications so you'll be the first ones to see when we put up a new video thank you very much